Chelsea Football Club are set to bid up to £77 million for Wesley Fofana as they look to take their spending way through the £250 million mark. Other young players in sight as well, including still pushing for Anthony Gordon. But the Leicester and French centre-back is top, top, top of the priority list right now as Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang is flying into the UK to complete his move to the football club. Big money being spent by Chelsea pushing until the very, very end. We're going to break that down and other deals. Uh, as we've already mentioned, Anthony Gordon. We're taking a look at Anthony after the, the comments from the Ajax manager last night really sort of sent the willies up Manchester United fans in many ways. We're delving into Paqueta to West Ham. Could there be a hijack from other Premier League clubs? And Cristiano Ronaldo's exit from Manchester United is still on. Make sure you're smashing like buttons. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace here on YouTube and on Twitch. If you're watching on Twitter, thank you very much. Hit the retweet button right now. Let's go. Welcome back, one and all. Good morning. Where are you watching from around the world today? I'd like to know in the comments section. I always like to know where people are tuning in from. It's always a very humble feeling, especially when you get people that are from some beautiful parts of the world. I'm not disrespecting anywhere in the UK, but it's always nice to hear where around the world people are watching from. If you are in Luton or Milton Keynes, don't worry about it. You can still say <laughs> hello and good morning as well. Um, lots to delve into this, uh, today, as we've already mentioned. The big news that kind of broke last night, Wesley Fofana, the deal feels close, £77 million, pounds, um, as quoted here uh, via uh, Ben Jacobs, that Chelsea's new improved bid for Wesley Fofana could be as high as £77 million, just under the record bid for a defender. And what's very intriguing, uh, very, very intriguing indeed about this deal and the way it's kind of been, Chelsea are really trying to do this to a point where it it doesn't go above this world record fee. Although I was told last week by a journalist that it could go as high as that. Chelsea are prepared to pay that amount, uh, but they don't want it. Obviously, they're going to try and get it for a little bit cheaper, and they are spending big, big. But £77 million, do you think this deal is going to, going to get done? Do you feel this deal is going to get over the line at that price? I want to know. Um, what you think and feel about it. And I think when you look at Chelsea overall, they're looking ahead of a lot of business at the moment. There's the report from Demazio about the move um, for, and I want to try and pronounce this, this young uh, Russian midfielder's name, right, is in Arsene uh, Zakian. I think, it, actually, do you know what? I, I run it through the how to pronounce earlier. This is how they pronounce it. Arsene Zakarian. Zakarian, sorry. Zakarian is how it's pronounced. Um, I get very confused with some of these names. And um, they're talking about a 12 and a half million pound deal for this young man. I was actually looking at Chelsea's transfer window spend. When a bummy yang's done, if they get Fafana over the line, if they land Anthony as well, that is still on the cards, you are looking at they've spent 180 already. That's been spent. 20 million on, on a bummy yang, 200 million. 77 million on Fafana. So it's 377 million. They signed this young lad at 12 and a half million. That now puts them up to a, nearly 300, 300, sorry, 290 million. They then, if they then go and get Anthony Gordon at 60 million pounds, you are then looking at uh, over three, what, 340, 350 million pounds having been spent. Maybe they even go for another midfield player as well. They, they may not, but that is a huge amount of money that Chelsea are investing. If they land their primary targets and more of these youngsters, they are looking to spend near £350 million pounds year one. And football fans said the spending would stop now that Roman is gone. I don't quite understand it myself. I want to say a big thank you here to uh, Adrian. Thank you very much for becoming an official member of the Football Terrace. It means a great deal to us. You would support us um, in that way. It really, really does. Uh, very respectful and nice of you 
to do that. And we were all the people with the super chat, and of course, become members. A huge amount of respect from from myself and everyone here at the terrace there for help keeping us uh, going and and progressing and moving in the right direction. It means uh, the world to us. It really, really does. Uh, my guy here, watch watching all the way in Bangladesh. Big up yourself, my friend. Uh, one of my members here. Um, Ridwan watching from Kenya. Welcome, welcome, welcome indeed. Um, but yeah, look, I, I want I want to know uh, your, your thoughts and your feelings on this. £77 million pound for Fafana. Do you think that's going to get done, dusted and, and over the line? And is it enough for Chelsea or, or do they need more? And I, and I ask that question because like I'm still kind of seeing people sort of put Chelsea's business down a little bit. Talk about it like it isn't very good. They haven't really strengthened. I understand there are still areas that people want to improve that midfield area. Why do you guys feel that they're not investing the money there? Why is it strikers? Why is it defenders that, that, that seen the bulk of that investment? For what they've spent, they actually could have gone and got Declan Rice. You know, you give Kukurea back as an example and a couple of these youngsters, you've got enough money for Declan Rice maybe. So we know that's been a primary long-term target of Chelsea. So I want to get your thoughts and I want to get your feelings on these deals. Uh, Matt here says, big up Terry. Um, he's better than Gordon. I hope that means Gordon is off. Um, how do I pronounce that name again? It's, it's gone from my head. Arsen Zakarian. Zakarian. I should better remember that. Zakarian. How do you know he's better than Gordon? I, 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 I'm only asking this question. Maybe you've been watching him, but I need to ask you this, this question. This is the first time this kid's name's come up on the TL. Search his name with the hashtag like CFC. Or people that are saying he's great, search their their at with his name. I haven't seen anyone talking about. It. Maybe you have, Matt. I haven't searched yours. But I, how do we know he's better if no one's seen him play? If nobody knows who he is, <laughs> I do need to ask that question, my friend. I do need to ask that question um, of this potential deal. Uh, comment here says we are in a rebuild. Midfield will be the priority next summer. Uh, Sammy McBell said we are going all in next summer for Declan Rice. Well, there you go. And th maybe that's the thing for Chelsea fans to stay patient and, and everything else. And look, I think Wesley Fofana, I think Aubameyang coming in with what Chelsea have already got is very, very good indeed. Yes, they may be a little bit light in that midfield, but I think Tuchel's a good enough manager to get Chelsea through that for a year. Maybe it means you don't win the Premier League this year. Maybe, maybe that is what it means. Doesn't mean you can't win a League Cup and FA Cup or the Champions League. Doesn't mean you can't have a successful season. And you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. So maybe maybe that's the point, sort of in relation to all this. Uh, this guy is better than Gordon. Again, I'm not, listen. I, you're a member of mine. I, I respect you. How do you know he is better than Gordon? <laughs> I, I need to ask. I need to ask how people know this because. I've never seen anyone talk about him ever, ever. I know that he's got he's got a pre, a decent goal to game ratio, but still, how do people know he's good, having never seen him play? And in fact, twenty four hours ago, and I am going to say this: I think ninety five percent of you had never heard of him when you were linked to Anthony Gordon a few oh, 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 two, from two weeks ago. I didn't. And by the way, he's a very different player from Anthony Gordon. He's primarily a central midfield player. So that's the weirdest thing I'm hearing here. People are saying uh, he, he's Zakarian is better than Anthony Gordon. They play different positions primarily. Nobody have, had heard of, of, of Zakarian 24 hours ago. So how do people know he's better? <laughs> come on now. Like, with all due respect, with all due respect, like, come on. That, that's one of the craziest takes I've ever heard in the terrace. We don't know how good or bad he is because no one knows who he is. You know, it, it's one of them mad ones. Uh, they just watch a two-minute compilation and think he's better than Gordon. However, in Russian league, it is not that hard. Yeah, the irony in it is the same people that will, will, will say that Bundesliga goals don't mean anything, league R goals don't mean anything. They'll they'll see this guy at twelve million go better better value than uh, than Anthony Gordon. He scored goals in Russia, therefore he's a top player. I hear you. Uh, Liao to Chelsea rumor won't go away. No, it won't. It won't. It's whether again you've got to remember. It depends how much money Chelsea have got left this year. It really does. Forget Anthony Gordon. Fafana, if Fafana, Zakarian and 
Aubameyang complete, Chelsea spending will go to nearly about 300 million, 300 million pounds already spent. It's a lot of money. I swear that will be the most spent in the summer. And what's interesting about Chelsea spending, because they've signed two or three of these kind of um, young players that people either haven't heard of or, you know, they're not looked at as first team players. It's kind of going under the radar how much money Chelsea have have spent. But when you actually break it down, it's been a hell of a lot of money. Like a hell of a lot of money. They really, really haven't. I was looking at it now. Where is it? I was looking at it this morning. So you look at the, the, their signings. Obviously, they've signed um, the goalkeeper from sh- sh- Chicago. I don't want Gabriel. Uh, so, so, is it Selena? Uh, so, uh, Solnina. They've signed uh, Casadel. They've signed. I can't pronounce uh, Carney's surname. I'm really sorry. I just can't do it. Um, but you, you're talking 16 million, 13 million, 8 million. It all adds up. On the youngsters they've signed so far, that's 20. That's, it's like nearly 40 million already. Plus this guy, like 50, 50 odd million on youngsters. Look, they've spent big money on the other players, Koulibaly, Sterling. Sterling's actually 50 million pounds, according to this website. But yeah, a lot of money. A lot of money has been spent by Chelsea. So it's going to be intriguing to see what they kind of do with it. Um, the link to become a member is in the description below. If you guys want to look, it's one of the, it says support the Terrace by becoming a member. If you can't find that, I'll post it in the live comment section for you right about now, my people. Uh, Chelsea have spent the most with 203 million. Barca second, Nottingham Forest third. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, in fairness, Man United are going to jump up hugely when the Anthony deal closes, which is still very likely. I know there's some rumors yesterday. United have spent 128 million. When Anthony goes through, they're going to burst through 200 million pound Man United this summer on, on the four players that they have signed. As so United will be joining that pack very, very soon indeed. Uh, how did Forrest spend 150 million? Well, they get 150 million in TV money for joining the Prem. So they've spent that. Um, but they've bought 19 players. <laughs> I, I don't know how it's going to work long term for them. I really, really don't. But we will see. Um, we mentioned the Anthony deal. And I wanted to speak about this. Now, the, the Anthony deal, uh, this is calling to uh, David uh, McDonald. says, Man United are increasingly confident a deal for Anthony will be done by deadline day with the submission of an improved offer for Ajax and the Brazil forward. Now, I think what's intriguing is there was, there was a number of comments made last night by the, the Ajax manager, which, again, it sent... Listen, I know that the Glazer Out movement needs attention. The Glazer Out movement needs... Um, needs focus there's, there's no there's no doubt about it whatsoever but i did see a lot of people having meltdown yesterday about about the, the comments from um the, the comments from the manager who said and I, i'm gonna i'm gonna get them up on the screen for you in just a moment just bear with me a second while i get this done but the comments were kind of like i'm not even having a pop but the, but the comments were just what you would expect him saying that he expects him to stay at the football club and this kind of thing but he said the exact same thing about Martinez, as far as, as far as I'm aware. But the deal is expected to happen. The deal is expected to to complete. Of course, I think what's kind of slowing this deal down a little bit is a replacement. They want Hakim Ziyech. The conversations with the conversations with um, with Chelsea have stalled somewhat. So there is kind of this feeling of will it or won't it kind of happen. And of course, you had these comments last night, as you could see um, from the Ajax manager that said that Anthony is not training with the group, but I do see him every day. Nothing has changed since last Sunday. Uh, we don't have a deadline, but I'm assuming Anthony will stay. He has a contract. And of course, that's kind of frustrated people. You know, oh, my God, is he going to is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Um you know, people are frustrated. They're worried. They're concerned. Like, but what if he doesn't? What? What if he? What? You know? What? What if he stays? What if we lose out on him? What? If, what if this falls through? What if this all collapses? And of course, like, it can. There's no 100% guarantee that a deal can't fall through, but it is seen as imminent. It is seen as a deal that's going to get over the line. And this is just the manager towing the party line. And I've been saying for years on the terrace: stop taking what managers say in in press conferences press conferences and interviews so literal all the time 
it, it, it's it's crazy to do it because very, very quite often they're not lying. Lying is the wrong word to use. I wouldn't say they're lying at any point, but they're just saying what they think is the right thing to say in that moment. So, you know, when I see comments such as this, it doesn't bother me because I don't believe that he's telling the truth. And when I say telling the truth, I don't mean that he's a liar. I, I, I don't think he, he believes that, you know, I don't think he's lying. I don't think he's, he's twisting the truth. I don't think he's saying things to try and wind people up. It's just that's that's how I'm going to see it. He said the same thing about Martinez and Martinez is gone. I'm sure you could probably find him saying the same thing about other players that have left Ajax as well this year. So I wouldn't, if I was a Man United fan, I wouldn't be panicking about it. I wouldn't be worried about it. I wouldn't even be overly frustrated about it, if I'm being absolutely honest with you. Uh, we have a super chat here that says, I don't get why fans are getting upset by Gordon. Back him and back Tuchel up the Chelsea. Well, Harry, what you've got to understand about football fans is as much as we, we, we a lot of us respect maybe the manager that we've got, a lot of us, a lot of us do. There are lots of football fans that think they know more than the managers. You know, we, we've got Roy that comes on the terrace, literally thinks he has a better talent ID than Tuchel. Can pick better players than Tuchel. And a lot of fans think and feel that. The one thing I respect about Roy is at least Roy had the gall to say it. I, I, I've got a better talent ID. A lot of people suggest it, but they never actually come out with any ball bags and actually say it. They just kind of allude towards it and imply it as an example. Um, Anthony Gordon is seen as unfashionable, unattractive, and a boring signing. So fans are not behind it. I'm going to be intrigued to see how it goes. I mean, Chelsea are pushing hard. Tuchel's pushing hard. Chelsea fans say that Tuchel is one of the top managers in the world. Yet nearly all the players he wants to buy, they don't rate. They don't. A lot of them don't like his style. A lot of them don't like how he coaches the attack. A lot of them don't like some of his in-game decisions. And I'm like, but how can you rate him so highly but not, not like most of the things that you're saying about him? I find it confusing. Uh, Sarim here says, Terry is my dead, dusted club buying players. Liverpool right now are linked to no one. No one. Um, as far as I've read. So, yeah. Um, but then that's what you guys do. That's what that's what you guys do. You might pull it out of the bag. Um, comment here says, there's nothing wrong with Glazer out. It's the leech who's trying to do everything in their power to stay in and leech, like confiscating banners, changing audio, probably made Twitter bans, etc. cetera. Uh, listen, the, the Glazer out movement, I said it last night in my video. I hope it doesn't. I'm scared that it will die. You know, the, you know, the content creators, I, I am going to, I, someone said to me, why did you publicly call out the, the content creators? I wanted to do it so that people could see the effort that was going in behind the scenes. Most of these people I've, I, I know personally, I've got phone numbers of, they, they, they know that I'm not calling them out from a beef point of view. A handful have reached out since last night. I am going to reach out to them all privately, but I feel like if the content creators don't come together, you've got the, 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 the 1958 movement who did a great job organizing the preview. They don't like the content creators. They think we're stealing their, their spotlight. There's the infighting amongst fans that will kill it. And if we go on a good run of form, it will be killed. Uh, these things will happen. Um, it always happens in that way. Uh, but I hope that it doesn't. I mean, I hope that I'm wrong about all of it. I hope that Eric Ten Hag runs a club team so well and, and has got the, the Glazers on board enough where they allow him to keep implementing the changes they have. Because we've seen an impact. Um, and we'll go through that another time. But yeah, we've just got to keep the movement going for now. Um, let's have a look at some more of your comments here. Uh, in regards, I'm, I was saying Liverpool will bid for De Jong yesterday. Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Maybe they won't. We, we, we shall see. Ah, come on, guys. Get some better comments in here. Some of the stuff you're saying this morning is boring. <laughs> some of the shit some of you are coming out of. I'm like, why, why is that fun? Uh, when Anthony comes in, that's five new first team players for United. Who can rotate in and out and blend in Ghana? Uh, Granaccio and co. Then next summer, we go for a striker midfielder right back. That's a rebuild. Glazers have got to back the manager. Yeah, look, that, that is a rebuild. And and, and hopefully it, it happens in that way. Um, but like I say, I'll keep pushing for it, but I'll believe it when I see it. You know, it's the same as if we start, it's what I implore Man United fans to, to understand. If we start playing better football, start winning more games, don't move away from the you don't move away from the glazer out movement until one they've sold or two we've got continue consistency around brilliant performances and challenging until that point we keep the pressure on them it's as simple as that but that won't happen 
If we beat Southampton, beat Leicester, beat Arsenal, it is dead. Trust me. Um, and if you bring it up, you'll be told, oh, stop. This is what you'll be told. You'll be told, stop bringing the mood down. You'll be told things are going okay. Don't be negative. Oh, you're just looking for attention. You're just looking for clout. Come on now, the Glazers have backed the manager. Let's get behind the team. That is what will be said. Um, and like I've said, like I've said before, if they do good things, I'll say, well done. But I'm not going to stop being Glazer out because they do a few good things for the first time in, in, in 10 years. It's crazy. Uh, got the best out of young dumbbell at Dortmund. Look, I, I think I think Chelsea fans have got to support their manager here. I think Chelsea fans have got to support what he wants and at least give it a chance and be open minded. You know, and I think that's the thing because they're closed minded on Anthony. If he doesn't come in and start scoring in the first game, if he doesn't come in and he isn't like the man game one, I think people are going to be on his neck so fast. It's unbelievable. And I, I feel a little bit. I feel a little bit sorry for him, if I'm being honest. I feel like he's on almost like on a hiding to nothing in many ways. I feel like he's on a little bit of a hiding to nothing. So, um, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens out there, people, with with, with that deal and everything surrounding it. Um, let's have a look at some more of your comments. Uh, West Ham midfielder this season, Paqueta Rice. Listen, that, that, that deal is crazy. The, the, the Paqueta deal is absolutely crazy. And you know, I tweeted about it this morning that, He's close to completing a move to West Ham for a fee close to 60 million euros. West Ham hope to finalize the deal this week, but Leon are difficult to negotiate with. West Ham feel the goalposts are ever changing. Uh, personal terms are agreed. Initially, they, they 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 agreed to pay a fee around 30 around 34 million pounds and or plus add-ons. And at the 11th hour, the goalposts were moved. Very kind of Nabil Fakir um esque in many ways. A new negotiation has been done around 60 million euros and he will be a, that they expect now he will be a West Ham player. He's, as I say, he's agreed to those personal terms. I'm still intrigued why an Arsenal, why a Liverpool, why a, why a Tottenham who need a more creative midfielder haven't come in. Um, could this be another Bruno Gimarish, um mistake? I remember a lot of fans sort of talking about how, you know, he's done it in France. Could he do it in the Prem? Is he kind of really what we need right now? Blah, blah, blah. And you look kind of look back at it now and think, yeah, Arsenal, uh, Tottenham, all of those. I mean, Benton Cohn's been good, but Bruno, Bruno Gamaris would have been good for everybody. In fact, I look at Man United and I think, well, you know, why didn't we buy him? You know, and Paqueta, Lucas Paqueta could be another one of these individuals who just ends up kind of tearing the Premier League up, making the Premier League look good, really improving what's going on. But at the same time, like, at the same time, leaving a lot of egg on people's faces. People sort of left there thinking, "What? You know, why didn't we go and buy him?" And by the way, if you want to buy Bruno Gamares off of off of Newcastle now, you're paying 60, 70 million pounds for him because he's proved he can play well in the Premier League. If Paqueta comes in at West Ham, West Ham are a slightly different kettle of fish than Newcastle because Newcastle are trying to become a title winning team, a Champions League team. I don't think West Ham are. Um, but if if Paqueta comes in and plays well, how much is he going to cost you if, if they're spending 60 million euros on him? He's costing you 80 million pounds, 90 million pounds to buy. So it is a big risk. It's a big, big risk from the clubs that were linked with him. A big, big risk from the clubs that wanted to buy him because you're, you're putting yourself now into a, into a position and a situation where you're going to end up maybe paying double what, what West Ham are paying for him now if you want to bring him in later on down the line. So... Yeah, I'm 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 intrigued about this deal. I'm very excited to watch him play uh, football in the Premier League. I think it's going to be a, a very very intriguing piece of business, uh, to say the least. An intriguing piece of business. By the way, people, make sure the like button's being smashed this morning. Let's get this past 550 likes while we're live. I also want to try and give out some more memberships, but you guys have gone so dry on hitting that like button, it's unbelievable. So I need you guys to give that a big fat smash for us. Uh, so we can gift out some more of them to you. It, uh, it's something we really want to be able to do. So give it a bit of a smash. Make sure you're subscribing to the Football Terrace as well. Um, it's great for us when you guys do that. So um, crack on. Uh, just buy the best British and watch them grow and keep the money in this. That is a very weird comment. It's not about buying the best. It's, buying the, it's about buying the best players. Whether they're British, French, Nigerian, American, Brazilian, doesn't really matter. 
Uh, morning, Terry. Dude, I'm praying we do Southampton tomorrow. Be so frustrating to have another letdown. Keep the same bad apples out of the team. Maybe add in Casemiro for Scotty. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Man United play against Southampton after the performance. But what I'm more intrigued about is can we maintain that intensity? Will we run as hard? Will we work as hard? You know, we had the Glazers pulling out all the stops because of the protest, because of the potential walkout, which didn't happen. Um, did the players up their game because they knew the world was watching because of the Casemiro signing, because of the the, the, the the match it was in the protest. They need to maintain their levels as well. So yeah, there's there's lots going on in this game and lots to focus on. And yes, I'm a bit like you guys. I'm, I'm very intrigued to see how, uh, how, how that goes. I really, really am. Um, bro, we don't... Bro, we don't... Paqueta, we have Mount, which is better. Yeah, but Paqueta plays more central midfield where Matt's more of a ten, uh, Matt Mount is more of a forward than he is a, 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 a central midfielder. Mason Mount can't play in a, a proper CM role. Like, he's advanced. Paqueta can play that advanced role, but I think he's a bit more versatile. I think you can have them both in your team. Um, But yeah, that's my, that's my view. Anyway, you guys may see it a little bit differently. Let's have a little, little look here. Um, let's have a look at some of your comments. A random fact, Arsenal have only had one English captain in the Premier League. Tony Adams. That must have... Only Tony, Tony Adams. Who was your captain when Sol Campbell was there? Who was your captain then? Is it Patrick Vieira? I don't remember. But yeah. Uh, Oddi Guna says, I don't know if you man know, uh, guys know this. Uh, but Nanny signed for Melbourne victory this year. Yeah, he did. He played. He, he, he was on the bench when Man United played them. Yeah, I, I saw that. Uh, Terry Paqueta is, uh, will fit uh, the Xhaka position perfectly. Xhaka's been playing like a number nine alongside Jesus recently. Tillemans is great, but won't do the job Paqueta can, in my opinion. Uh, question, Terry. Why isn't Liverpool shopping um, for uh, Malinkovic? Savage is still quality. Look, I, listen, I, I don't know why Liverpool are not buying players. Barring, I think they're trying to put all their eggs into their basket to sign Jude Bellingham next year. That's the only thing that makes sense. That's the only thing that I think it, 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 it could hold any real truth um, is that they're going to try and buy him next year. Le legitimately, that, that's, that's all I can think is that that's the case and that's what they're looking to do. Um, outside of that, it, 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 it doesn't make much sense to me um that could that the only reason but e even then like I, I kind of look at liverpool like legitimately and i feel like i understand um the kind of reasoning and the rationale behind um what they're looking at and what they're trying to do and what they're trying to achieve i, I really really do but equally i kind of feel equally i kind of feel a little bit like and i want to make sure i say this in the right way they could Liverpool surely have the money to go and buy a midfielder this year and buy another midfielder next year. They, they, you, just because you're after Jude Bellingham next season doesn't mean you can't go out this year and buy a good quality midfield player. They're available. Liverpool Football Club have huge money. I remember, and this is why Liverpool fans annoy me, because you guys celebrated like, like you'd won the lottery when you signed the new Nike deal. Oh my God, Terry. We're going to earn, I, I'm going to get the, maybe get the percentage a little bit wrong, but we're going to earn 20% of all Liverpool branded Nike merchandise sold. The first deal ever like it. Now, Liverpool fans buy their products and buy their brand like you wouldn't believe globally. So where is all this money from this, this groundbreaking deal that nobody else had? Where is all the money? Yes, there was a few years. FSG had this great excuse for a couple of years. Pandemic. The pandemic. The pandemic. The pandemic. Well, you could make losses in the pandemic of a greater degree that guard against FFP and you won't get in trouble for it. The money's now returning. There's now a new American based TV deal in, in position, which is generating more money for the football clubs. You've, you've had this new sponsorship deal in place where you're earning more money than any other club per item sold. It's been in place now, what for two years, two and a half years, something along those lines. Where's the money? Where's the money? And I don't want to hear this notion of, oh, it isn't our way. We do Moneyball, blah, blah, blah. Moneyball, the way you did it works when you haven't won a title for 30 years and you're on your way to building a team that's capable. But Liverpool Football Club 
shouldn't be aiming, in my opinion, with their income size and size of their fan base and with the manager that they've got to build a brilliant team for it to fall apart because of old, old age and injury and, and, and the normal attrition of a squad. And then to go back out and go, right, now we're just going to spend small amounts of money on lots of young players and build them up over the next five years to create another title winning team that wins one one title in five five years. That for me doesn't feel very Liverpool football club. That feels to me like a mid-table team in terms of approach. Of course, Liverpool can do better than a mid-table team because they can attract better players. They can attract a better manager. They've got the money to kind of do this. But if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be very, very frustrated with the way my football club is behaving because they rave on about how well they're run, about the sponsorship deals, the money, their income. Spend it on winning football matches. Spend it on trying to... Because right now, this is not the Pep Klopp era. This is the Pep era. And Liverpool should be in it. Liverpool should be in the conversation. As brilliant as this Liverpool team has been, they've won one league title. And in 20 years' time, the record books will show one league title. They need to win more. So if I'm a Liverpool fan, I'm frustrated. I'm calling them out. And not because they're bad owners. Not because they're horrible owners. Not because they're... They're taking the club backwards. None of these things. They've done brilliant things. They've done, they've done brilliant, brilliant things. They have with, um, they've done brilliant, brilliant things with Liverpool in getting them back to this level. But they need to invest more. They need to invest more. Waiting for Jude Bellingham next year is almost like saying, well, I'm going to write the season off. Now, I'm someone that predicted and felt that Liverpool, I, I predicted Liverpool to be my, my, my uh, title winners. And people would say, oh, that's a mad prediction. And it was a little bit mad. But I just felt that they were going to come back this season with a bit between their teeth. Having watched them so far, I just don't think that's possible. I think I'm so off with that view. Um, but we'll see. Uh, waiting to sign Bellingham next season is a huge risk given their performance this year. What if they finish outside the top four? He might go somewhere else. It's a very good point. I mean, what if he just goes somewhere else anyway? Uh, Terry, any netto news? Um, that will be on the top six show later on this afternoon. Now, I need your support with the top six show, people. I need you all back at 6 p.m. UK time on that show tonight. Uh, very, very important to us indeed. Uh, it could be a little bit of a, a, of a turning point for the football terrace. I need every single one of you there with me, there and with me on that show tonight at 6 p.m. Um, and we'll be talking Neto. We're talking Zaha to Arsenal. We'll be updating on De Jong, previewing the weekend, and much, much more. Brilliant panel for you tonight as well. So make sure you're there 6 p.m. Uh, no guarantee Bellingham goes to Liverpool either. And that's the point. that th There is no guarantee he ends up at the football club. And that's the bit where I, I work with a Liverpool fan and uh, uh, give me sport. Oh, you know him, Louis. I asked him if he's concerned. Are you worried that you're, you're not signing any, any, any midfielders? No. Nope. Bellingham next year, not a problem. And I just listened to it and I'm like, that's you towing the party line. That's you listening to what the, the top level content creators say and essentially like just going with it. Yep, that's what that's it. For me, there's something odd about that. There's something odd about just bending over and taking it without any kind of pushback. I, I, I find it very, very strange indeed for that to be the approach from Liverpool fans and more and more Liverpool fans are waking up to it and pushing for more. Um, it isn't the owners. Terry Klopp is in this to be, sorry, Klopp, it is in this to, oh, in this too. He is stubborn. Um, look, I, I get there's an element of Jurgen Klopp being stubborn. I, I do understand that. But equally, equally, this is, this is, this is a, this is an issue, I think, a little bit deeper than that as well. Uh, keep your comments coming in, people. Keep smashing that like button for us this morning. Um, I've just watched a comp and looked at, uh, I, I got his name down earlier and I forgot it again now. Hang on. Arsene Zakarian. Zakarian. Um, stats. Uh, and he's so creative and young with a high potential, just what we need. I think all the young players Chelsea have signed this summer kind of fit that bill. So very interesting approach. Uh, check Henry Winter's tweet. Uh, he may have leaked. But yeah, I've seen Henry Win Winter's tweet. I've seen the quote. Saying that he's very much, he's very excited about watching Jude Bellingham at Liverpool next year. But what did he say before and after it? No, I haven't seen that yet. I've got to go and find it because he could be talking in hypotheticals as opposed to this deal is definitely going to um, happen. Uh, I, I, that's what I would say to people: like, be 
be mindful of that. Like, I, w- I wouldn't get too carried away at this moment in time, personally. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't get too carried away uh, with, with this right now. Uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, by the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the deal for um, Zakaria is... Zakarian, sorry. Is it Zakarian? Oh, I forgot it again. Arsene Zakarian. Zakarian, I was right. <laughs> is actually getting a lot closer, uh, according to um, him as it stands right now, uh, with this deal. So it's another done deal imminent for Chelsea. Another young, another young player uh, on their way into Chelsea Football Club as well. So I'm just reading the story over here. Mm, it's so intriguing what Chelsea... Why when people keep writing Chelsea off, it annoys me. And the reason it annoys me is because there's almost like there's a lack of sort of critical thinking from people around that. Look what they're doing here. Like they're killing two birds with one stone. They're like building a squad for the future at the same time as building a team for now. And there's something in that. There's something, you know, they're looking to, I feel like they're looking to do this very differently to how Roman did. And they're only, they're, they're, they're only year, they're only in year one. So I think we have to give it a little bit more time, but we will see. Uh, Let's have a little look at what's being said here from you guys this morning. Using the translator is so funny. Do you know what it is? It's like with my dyslexia, like one reading names, reading is hard for me Two, remembering how to pronounce the word. It's that I can't explain this. It's when I put letters together, I sometimes forget how to pronounce the sounds it, because I can't see what letters they are. I, that sounds weird, right? But when I read, I sometimes can't work. I can't read what letters they are. <laughs> So I don't, I can't do the sounds. I can read just as well. So like the word Wesley, okay? the word translator. If you had the T and the, and the R at the end and then mixed up some of the letters in the middle, I would still read it the same. It doesn't really change for me. <laughs> it doesn't really change. That's a, Especially when I'm under pressure and people are watching me read, it looks the same word. So the problem is because it all jumbles up, I can't always pronounce it because I don't know what letters, the order the letters go in and I can't get the sounds right. <laughs> It's it, honestly, it's mental. It's it's it literally is mental. It's my brain. Um, so I have to use it. I'm very very sorry uh, that I have this condition. Um, but you know what I mean. Uh, Einstein had it, and Richard Branson's got it. So um, I'm doing all right. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it's cool being illiterate, Terry. Well, I think there's a difference um, between being illiterate and being dyslexic. Um, and I know, I know, I've, I've got a, I've got a friend who I used to work with in the building industry who's illiterate. And and that was more because he didn't go to school. Like he didn't learn to read or write as opposed to me. Um, I, I, I've learned to read and write, but um, I'm, it's, it, it's a condition that stops me. So it, it's not, I'm not illiterate. I, I, I don't lack comprehension. I know how to write things. It's that I'm dyslexic and words get jumbled up. And I can't stop them. It is literally my, I don't think you understand this. When I look at a word and you look at a word, I see it differently. It changes and moves and shit. It's fucking mental. Honestly, it's crazy. Um, yeah, like I'm literally the opposite of illiterate. Yeah. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, Arsenal finally switched. Um, by the way, it's easy to read things when it's on colored, colored backgrounds. I don't know why, but it just is. Um, switched on or full storm due to a good form. Spurs fan asking, I'm not scared of them. Honest. When it comes to Arsenal, let me just I think Arsenal look really, really good. But if Arsenal don't sign anybody else between now and the end of the window, as they promised, as they promised their fans. And what's interesting now, the notion is, oh, Tillemans is now seen as too expensive. That wasn't the reason you were pulling away eight weeks ago when I was getting cooked by Gunas for saying, you guys really believe this? Yes, Terry, our tier ones are telling us. If they pull away and say we're not spending the money on Tillemans, they're damaging their season potentially. If they don't sign, where's the money that they were going to spend on Rafinha? Are you telling me they spent that on Zinchenko? They said they, they said they're cooling on Tillemans to go and get Rafinha. They didn't get Rafinha. Sorry. Why can't you go for Tillemans? Like the, store, like the only thing I'd say to Arsenal fans is this. You've got a brilliant young squad. Arteta is looking better and better by the day. You're playing well. Very, very well. You need to now build the squad deeper and guard against injuries. And I know Arsenal fans won't want to call this out because the Arsenal feel-good factor online is so good at the moment. If you step outside that, you, you, you get cooked. You step outside that, you get absolutely obliterated by people. But if Arsenal fail to sign at least one more player, 
an injury or two and it could really scupper their season. Their fans have got to demand that more money is spent because they were promised that that money would be spent. They were told that that money would be spent. And they just were. Whether people, whether people want to hear that or not, it's kind of irrelevant to me. I don't really care what people do and don't want to hear. They were told. And I'm going to go back and find those articles and go back and find the tweets connected and go, this is what you guys said. Why are you not demanding more? Like, don't keep saying this to Arsenal fans. As good as you're doing, don't let that make you take your foot off your owner's necks. You ain't back yet. You know, as good as you're doing, as much as I praise you. But I don't think it's a false dawn. I think they're, they're legitimately better. I think they've legitimately improved. I still think they'll, they can come third this year, but they still need the extra signing. I don't think we can just walk away from that and say, no, that they're fine now. They don't need to sign more players. I want to say a big thank you here to my guy for becoming an official member of the Football Terrace, an official squad member of that as well. Thank you very much indeed. If we hit, by the way, 700 likes while we're live, I'm going to gift out 10 free memberships to you all today as well. Uh, Terry, the hairline is looking fresh, bro. Had mine done seven months ago. How can we get the Glazer Out movement moving harder from South Africa? First of all, well done on getting the transplant done, my friend. Um, and, and well done for admitting out loud you've done it. A lot of people don't like to do it. I mean, I'm cool. It's getting there. Like, it's it's thickening out. I've been gym this morning, so it's a little bit there. But it's it's in a pretty good state at the minute. Like, it's pretty decent. And that's I've still got, like, more than 12 months of thickening out. No, not 12 months. I've still got, what have I got? I've been... I, uh, just like, yeah, about a year, about a year of thickening out to go. Like, it's getting there slowly. Like, by the way, there was no hair here. Like, literally, I had no hair here like six months ago. It's getting there nicely. Um, how do we keep the Glazer Out movement going? Um, fans pulling together, content creators coming together. The groups that organize the protests st- drop their arrogance. You don't need to like fan cameras, but utilize them. This is around everybody dropping their arrogance and their past and their problems. I've had YouTubers lie about me, spread crap about me. I don't care about that as much as I care about Man United being better. So put your differences aside. On top of that, fans have got to pull their money. And I know some, some, some will say, oh, look, look, we might be improving it here. I don't, I don't want to walk away from it. Um, and I, and I, I kind of get that. But I think we have to do it. Or, or, or very, at the very least, and this is what I mean by I want to do debate shows with these people. And I said yesterday, let's launch a Glazer Out channel. So no one person's channel grows more than the other. Let's just make a brand new channel, the Glazer Out channel. And let's debate these things. Maybe it isn't we pull our money straight away. Maybe what we do is we threaten to pull our money if we don't see certain things implemented. Like maybe it's the threat first before we actually do it, as an example, to see whether the threat makes the change and if we know the threat makes a change we then know if the change is then undone or they go back on it we know we pull our money it works there's, there's so many things we could do but man united fans protesting alone won't work hashtags alone won't work me saying pull your money alone won't work it needs a collective effort and if that doesn't happen and if there's arrogance amongst man united fans it, it will fall away that that's what's going to happen here and if we win glazer out we lose glazer out that's the way around it uh, Man United should should go for Conrad uh, Lehmer, uh from Leipzig. A lot of people this summer have been speaking about him and talking about how good he is, but we will see. Uh, you're not missing anything. There's nothing like supporting this club when it's uh, at its best. Trust me on this. Hello, when Man United are good, they're it's great. When any when any team's good, it's great to support like that club. Like I love supporting the team when they're doing what. Like when the, I, I miss Man United being good because I miss the feel good factor. Uh, Terry is one of them dons uh, that, that goes to the gym to get hench out of nowhere um, and show no gym footy. Yeah, I'm I'm not about sharing gym footage. I find that weird. People filming themselves in the gym. Um, I do. It's just not my thing. I, I just don't know. I, I'd find it weird to do. It. Let me rephrase that. I'd find it weird to do it. If some guys do that, great. I go through peaks and troughs. I'll do like six months in the gym and look great, and then I'll do like six months of sitting down, eating Pringles, and drinking wine. And I'll look like a big, fat, hairy marshmallow. But yeah, that's just me. Uh, I've tried becoming a member like five times. It keeps sending it will keep, it keeps sending the money back. I don't understand how that's working. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Where are you based? Maybe it's the country you're in doesn't allow membership. Um, but we've got a solution for that for you tonight at 6 p.m. So make sure you're tuning into the Football Terrace. Uh, it's going to be a huge, huge show tonight. Uh, you want to make sure you're part of that. 6 p.m. The top six show, it's going to be massive. Um, empty Old Trafford and everyone should stop buying merch. That makes the club look bad, and that would have a big impact on the stock. Look at any company that becomes toxic and, and gets bad reviews. 
absolutely my friend uh yeah absolutely spot on um eat garlic terry it makes your metabolism like you're 19 i've actually got pretty good mess i'm one of these weird people i can put weight on really quickly i can also lose weight really quickly as well I'm, I'm still quite lucky uh i'm still quite lucky indeed uh terry uh chelsea sign a bummy and for fauna you reckon Yes, I do. I do think they get both. I do think that they, they 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 can bring both in and they will bring both in, uh, in my humble opinion. Now, there's another deal that I wanted to speak about with you all today. Ronaldo, this was an interesting story last night that Ronaldo is reportedly on the verge of signing for Sporting Lisbon. The deal is 99% done. The club will begin presentation preparations tomorrow. Now, I find this a very intriguing transfer story, uh, predominantly because you look at the Ronaldo situation and it's, and it's a very, very intriguing one indeed around, you know, why Sporting Lisbon, what will they pay in terms of fee? Can they afford his salary? It's already kind of been, um, it's kind of already been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like debunked by, by people that it won't happen, but I still, I've got a feeling that he's still going to leave Manchester United. So this, this could be the deal that kind of pushes it over that, that this could be it. Now, Man United fans really want Gakpo. I've got a feeling that Gakpo only happens if Cristiano Ronaldo leaves. And I think some of that decision will be financial. Um, there is kind of talk, like Casemiro is talking him up. I'd love him to stay. Ten Hag has kind of said the right things publicly. But if you actually look outside of, uh, if you actually look outside of the, um, the transfer story element is a big story going around today that Ronaldo was like brutally dropped by Eric Ten Hag in front of everybody. He, he, he you know, and I don't, th and a lot of that was to do with Ten Hag being angry and Ten Hag being frustrated at Ronaldo's kind of Insta was it Instagram post basically saying that I'm going to reveal everything in two weeks. And obviously that, you know, most Man United fans worth their salt called that out at the time because well, if you're going to stay and, 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 and tell us the truth now, but you're going to tell us the truth after the window shuts because you don't actually know where you're going to be because you're still pushing for a move away. So therefore, the rumors about you wanting to leave have to be goddamn true. Otherwise, you'd come out now, right? So I, I think Ten Hag dropping, I don't think Ten Hag wants him per se. I don't think he can work hard enough, run hard enough to, to, to make Man United's football under Ten Hag work. So I, I think United will like will publicly state they don't want to sell him, will publicly state they don't want to lose him. But I think in reality, as long as as long as they get the right money for him and there's a replacement, which could be Gakpo. And again, what's intriguing about the Gakpo situation is the 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 the, the uh, European journalists, especially from the Netherlands, are talking like both could still happen. In England, it's kind of being played down as it won't or very unlikely or it's expected that both deals won't happen together. So I'm really intrigued to see what happens with this. I would personally like to see Ronaldo leave. Um, I think it could be bad times for everybody involved if he is to stay um, at the football club next year. But I do want your thoughts and feelings on that. Uh, I want to say a big thank you here to MUFC Realist TV. Thank you very much for becoming... Uh, an official uh, academy member of the Football Terrace. It means a great deal to me uh, that you have come on and got that done. Thank you very, very much indeed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Terry, is it true the Glazers are banning Glazer out banners? Yes. Well, the football club is, but the football club is run by them. There's video footage of those banners being taken down. Again, if you're a Man United fan in the ground and they're not letting you express yourself, if you're a Man United fan in the ground and they're like muting out your Glazer out chants, why are you giving them your money? I don't that make no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, it's wrong. Um, I really want Anthony at United. I have not seen a player with his qualities with the ball since we had a young Ronaldo at the club. Do you know what, Jack? That's, that's a really good point. His, like, um, ability on the ball is immense. Like, some of the touch, like, the way he controls the ball, with, I don't know what it's called. It's probably got a name. I don't know. Where he, the ball's coming down and he controls it with the, with, with his right foot, but it's kind of like bent up behind him. I love that sort of thing. And and Man United, you know, we are, we, we were one of the first flair clubs in England. You know, there's the, the, the reason one of our songs is sung about, you know, get yourself to that football ground. 
when we're playing in your town football talk by, by Matt Busby. It, 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 I'm not singing it in tune, but th that's the song. Man United grew a, a, a national fan base based on the way Man United played football, the Busby Babes, and then the sort of second team that came along under Sir Matt Busby with the with the uh, Dennis Laws and, of course, um, George Best, when you know our team, our, our team was doing things that clubs in England just didn't do back then. It's part of our DNA to have these types of players, and there's a great rawness and a, 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 and tenacity about the way he plays, and 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 I like it. Whether that trans, but it has to then translate to goals and assists. If it doesn't translate to goals and assists, it it, it, it means nothing. It means nothing. He's basically you're basically if if Anthony's look, I look at Anthony this way: if Anthony comes in with skill, the touches, the tricks, the flair, and he's scoring, he's assisting, he's creating, he's helping to dominate games, he improves that right-hand side, he brings an element of, of fluidity and balance at the same time to the team because he's dangerous and potent on the right. It means that you're not getting as many players double up on us on the left-hand side, which we typically do because the majority of our, our attacks come down the left. It means there's more space for our left-hand side of the attackers, more space for our midfielders, giving them more opportunity to create and score. It's forcing teams back, and it stops their fullbacks pushing back so much. All these things would be excellent to see. But if all he is is tricks and flicks, and there's no end product, you're basically spending £80 million on Jeremy Lynch. <laughs> and he's great, a great freestyle baller, but he's not a good football player at the elite end of the spectrum. He just isn't. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been a freestyler on YouTube. He'd have been playing in the first team of a Premier League football team. And there's a huge difference between people with great... I see, there's a guy I watch on YouTube. Oh, he's one of the best touch I've seen in my life. But he's not good enough to be a football player. Otherwise, he'd be a football player. He, he really, really would be. Like, it, it, it'd be almost impossible for someone of that quality to fall through the net. So as much as I love Anthony's skills, his technique, how he controls the ball, I just hope that translates into goals and assists or chances being created in the dominance. And if that does, what a player Man United will have on their hands. What a player. Uh, apparently, Anthony has told Ajax he wants to leave in negotiations in 48 hours, according to Dutch sources. Oh, look, he's this this, this man has handed in a... Uh, this guy has handed in a, a transfer request 100 and uh, 10%. Whether it's an official one where he loses bonuses, but he's being fined £50,000 a week at the moment. Or I think it's 50000 a week. Um, because he's he's not training. I want to make sure I get that right. Is it £50,000 a week that he's been charged or he's been fined fifty grand? Yeah, uh, Ajax have been fining Anthony £50,000 each day that he doesn't report to training. So not even a week. What's he even earning? Like, that's a lot of money. So, like, they're really punishing him. So he must have done something wrong or must have put in a transfer request as well as not turning off train. 50K a day, yeah, everyone's saying it there. It's huge. I doubt he's even... What, what is his salary? Like, what is his uh, salary? Like, do you get what I mean? Like, this is, this is eating into him. Now, what you'll probably find, though, is they're not obviously taking the money off him. He's just not going to get... He's on 19 grand a week. <laughs> that's another reason. That's another thing as well. That's, that's according to sportsalary.com. Uh, he's on £19,000 per week, which is a lot of money to you and I. In fairness, though, Mark Goldbridge earns more than that. Mark Goldbridge is a YouTuber earns more than 19k a week in income. Like, some YouTubers earn more money <laughs> than him at Ajax, right? So I kind of look at it along the I kind of look at it along the lines of, um, like, they're finding him that money, which basically means he's not going to get paid for like three months if he stays at the club, right? That's why he's got to get out. So, yeah, I mean, that's also another reason why he wants to leave because he's probably going to come in at Man United on 150 a week. Like the man's almost like, what? what is that? Is that eight times the money or something like that? Huge, huge. And it is very risky because this guy, if he keeps not training, if he gets fined that again, what's he, is that three days? I think he's been fined that. So, so far he's been fined 150,000. Transfer window ends in seven days, right? So seven times 50, 350,000. Wow. So by the, by the, by the, by the, by next Thursday, if he's not a Manchester United player, okay, 50,000 pound 
times 10, right? It's 500,000 pounds in total, okay? He gets paid. Yeah, that's that's more than half his yearly salary. Means between now and like January, he ain't earning a penny. <laughs> it can't be. Uh, Goldbridge uh, on nine. No, listen, I'm, I'm guesstimating based on like, based on what you get paid per thousand views on YouTube and then how many views he gets. It's not hard to work out how much money somebody makes. Um, I'm just being flippant. I don't exactly know. I don't, I've never looked at his analytics, but um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon Goldbridge earns. I reckon, I reckon the big football YouTubers, the Chew Geordies, the Goldbridges, the Don Robbies, their channels have got to make 20, 30 grand a week. Easy. These men are getting like 10 million views a week. They've got to be. Got to be. I swear Lee Gunner posted his earnings once of about seven. I'll give you an example. I swear Lee Gunner once posted um, something along the lines of um, that he earned like seven grand in a month, eight grand in a month when him and DT had a spat. And he gets about a million views, two million views a month. So work that out. If Lee Gunner can earn, get two million views a month and earn seven, eight grand, if a channel's getting 10 million views a week, just do the math. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't even done the math, but just work it out. Like it's just That's what I'm basing it on. <laughs> Maybe 10 million views a week is a bit much. Maybe. I don't know, you know. I don't know. I can tell exactly how many views, actually, a month they, those channels get. Uh, public information. It's done by a website. And I'm not even like trying to, I'm just, I don't know how we got onto this. <laughs> um, let me have a little look here. Let me log in to this. Uh, what are they saying here? United Stand. United Stand in the last 30 days has done 32 million views. So again, I don't know. Work it out. If Lee Gunner run seven, sorry, eight grand off of, and what does Lee Gunner get? Lee Gunner in, in, in that same period. Lee Gunner, sorry, so I'm I'm overhyping. So Lee Gunner's earning about seven, eight grand off of 800,000 views. Do the math. <laughs> Just do the math. That's all I'm saying is 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 do the math. Um that's all. That's all I'm that's all I'm that's all I'm saying is do the math. Um but there, anyway, anyway, I digress. It was just a fr it was a throwaway comment, <laughs> and fair play by the way. Um, let's have a little look. Um, how many views do I get a month? Uh, we we average about four million a month. Like we're doing decent. We're doing decent. Interestingly, in the last three months, uh, this was a little achievement. We we get more views now than Football Daily on their YouTube channel. I'm very proud of that, especially if they're backed by Sky Sports. So we're doing all right, man. We're doing good. About four billion a month, something along those lines. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, Zane has more money. Yeah, he does. That man used to super chat like a crazy guy. Um, but there we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, Neil and I watch their website. They're, they're very, very good indeed. They're very, very good indeed. Everyone's doing well. I, by the way, I don't know how much anybody earns. I'm only basing it on what Lee Gunner put. Lee Gunner's the only YouTuber I've ever seen post what he earns. <laughs> He's the only guy. Um, it made me laugh. It made me laugh. Uh, literally impossible to empty Old Trafford. Our fan base are too big worldwide. See, this is where I disagree. It takes people to make action to create further action. W whenever I hear people say, yeah, but if I give up my ticket, somebody else will buy it. Man United fans listen to each other. I'll give you an example, Cody. I bet you, you know at least one Man United fan that you could convince to stop spending money on the club. If you base that logic across every Man United fan, we can stop it. So I'm telling you, if 60,000 season ticket holders threaten to cancel their season tickets and then cancel their season tickets in protest, yes, some people would buy those tickets. But I believe if you, if, if between them, the 58 group, Goldbridge, Housen, McCola, me, Flex, Alice Talks Football, Ransom Bantz, Culture Cam, Liez, you know, Flying Pig, Neeks, if we all then come together and said, what a great idea. Come on, guys, get behind them, support them. No one renew it. You might only find 10,000, 15,000 pe new people take those tickets. But a lot go, do you know what? I, I'm on the waiting list, but I'm going to back you and I'm going to pull away as well. 
when one person does something, people move. There's actually a graph you can look at, like early ad adapters to new technology. And then how over the course of time, when you hit a tipping point of enough people using it, everybody else just goes. It's those early, uh, those early uh, adopters uh, that are need. I'm actually going to find it. Early adopters. Uh, early adopters. And there must be the graph here. Ah, here we go. I found the graph. The graph's easier to find. Um, but I need to find the, the right wording on it as an example. Yeah. This is what you this is what you get. This is it's called the the pro, the product adoption curve. So this mainly applies to like when you're buying um products essentially. However, this also applies to um process and people buying into ideas. And we did this we we, we changed the way I when I was working in the banking industry, we, we were changing from the old fashioned analog way of banking to the digital way of banking. And we literally use this as a way of assessing where we were. And as soon as we went past a particular tipping point, this is how things work. So this is how humans work, generally speaking. Let me put this up on the screen for you. I know some of you are going to find this boring, but it's why I believe what I believe, because there's science behind it. There's facts behind it. There's This is tried and tested across multiple in, in, industries, multiple nations, and multiple people. But let me put this up on the screen. This is why I disagree with your comment, although I respect it. Let me wait for this to load up. Okay. So this is what happens. You get your innovators who you're early to generally two and a half percent of people. You get your early adopters that go, oh, I think that's a good idea. You get your early majority. And that what happens is once you get past that early majority, the rest follow suit. And then you always have your lag, your, 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 your laggers, as it were. So you're always going to get the people that turn around and say, you're always going to get the individual that, that, that buy the tickets, that buy the shirts. But you look at the percentages. Now, this has been scientifically proven. OK, you can get 60, 70, 80, 80. You can get almost 85 percent of the fan base or groups of people to buy into new ideas. You know, I, I didn't invent this. This is just the way things work. You know. Th this is what happens and it takes and, and, and it's not until you get to the early majority part, which is what they call the slope of enlightenment. And then what kind of happens is it takes a while to get people on board. But the I, the problem is if nobody adopts early, if nobody makes a sacrifice, you never get to that point. I don't say things based on a whim. I, I, I say things based on personal experience, having seen these changes made before and knowing that everyone that says, but if I do it, no one else will. They're not. They're either being disingenuous. They're not backing themselves to have any influence. And thirdly, they're not listening to the science. Every Man United fan knows at least one other United fan they could convince to stop spending money. That's all your mission is. I'll, I'll stop KJ from spending money. KJ then stops his friend from spending money. He then stops it. And it, through me, we've stopped four people. And it goes on, so on and so on. So if 100,000 Man United fans got another 100,000 Man United fans to stop, that's 200,000. If, that two, if that new 100,000 get another 100,000, and so on and so forth, it multiplies, multiplies, multiplies. If a year I stop five people, you stop five people. Those five people stop five people. That's how quickly it multiplies. This graph has been used by industry, by government, by scientists, by psychologists for a long, long time. And it works, my friends. But it's whether or not people want to get me. It's a sacrifice. And the sacrifice is hard. It's as simple as that for me. So, um... This is sheer stupidity. No, no, I know I'm, what I'm saying is right, my friend. You know? Um, Terry, uh, that's the adoption curve. You were trying to get people to take something out of their lives, not add something to them. But it is adding something to them. So you're, again, you're absolutely right. You're, you're not looking at it from the right angle. I understand it's the adoption curve, but you're adopting a new approach of loving and supporting your club. That is what you're adopting. The adaptation is. The traditional way of supporting a club is put your money into the club, stand on the terraces and clear, cheer for your football club. You know, where you're, I used to, do you know what I used to wear Man United shirts the most when we lost? We'd lose a game. I'd be in the gym the next day. I'd have my shirt on. I, I'm, I'm annoyed we lost, but I'm repping my club. I'm proud of my club. The adoption, i.e. the adoption curve, is thinking of a new way of doing it. Pulling your money, in my opinion, is more supportive if you want the Glazers to sell the club. Because if you keep giving them your money, they ain't selling, in my humble opinion. 
Some people have said to me, I'm happy for them to, I'm happy to compromise, by the way, with the Glazers and for them to just run it better. Some people go, no, I want them out. Well, they ain't leaving unless you crash the stock price, crash the valuation and pull the money away. So my friend, I totally get your challenge, but that's it. Uh, hang on. You're comparing boycotting a product to creating a product because the curve doesn't make this work the same way. Now, I, I believe that it does, my friend, because they're buying into what they're doing. And I understand that often the adoption curve is used on products. But when we use it in the banking industry, and by the way, this was this was convincing people to stop using traditional banking methods, paying cash in over counters and, and, and subscribing to digital ways of banking. When the bank started this process, 92% of our, of our customers said they will not use digital banking. Even young people, no, I ain't using that. Now tell me now that you guys aren't using tap, tapping on your cards. Tell me now you're not using banking apps. Tell me now you're not using the fintech banks. How many of you are standing for hours and hours on end in banking queues, in, in branches on high streets now? And we're only, and those, the banks have only dipped their foot into the ocean. Other countries are well ahead of the UK. And the adoption curve was one of the tools they use. Once we get enough people doing it, the rest follow. So how do I know this works? I've seen it change one of the most traditional industries in the world. Now, it's harder with Man United and it's harder because you're dealing with something people love. No one loves their bank. So I totally understand there is a fundamental difference, but the principle remains the same. You will have your innovators that think this will save the club. You have your early adopters that buy into it. You then have to work very, very hard on the enlightenment element to get your early adopters, your early majority through. Once you get the early majority through, you're now looking at nearly 50%. Once 50% have done something, 20 to 30% typically follow in any direction. That you're, that you're going in. And then you always have your laggers that never change, right? That's why there's some people still that are watching, v like, ah, oh, I need to get a VHS, a VHS. There's still some people that don't want to have a smartphone. There's still some people that, that won't move into the modern day times. So I totally get where you're coming from, Manish, but I've seen this work on a business sense and you're still dealing with human beings. It's harder when it comes to the emotion of a football club, but I truly believe it can work. The problem that you get is you will get the challenge like yourselves. Nah, I don't think it works. I'm not going to try it. And those people are the late majority or they're the laggards. And how do I know this? Because what you just said to me is what, was, is what was said to me by my staff and the departments I run in the banks when they said, there's no way we're convincing customers to change how they bank. There's no way we're going to do this. And I'll give you an example in the, in, in the branches that I looked after. My average queue time before we started this was 47 minutes to come in and deposit or take money out. Do you know what it was after two years of me running this program? And it, was, it took two years. That was actually two years to get all the machinery installed, training stuff, everything. Do you know what the average queue time went down to? Four and a half minutes. Four and a half minutes. Everybody said it was impossible. In fact, we used to run Saturdays with no counters at all. Everybody said it was impossible. We changed the way people banked. And I'm sure if you could go through people in other industries, it'll give you multiple examples of how they changed the way people did things. That's why I know this will work. But what it needs is influencers coming together and innovators coming together for those early adopters, and then everybody pushes. And it takes more than one. This is the point. It takes more than one protest, one video. It's a consistent push. Uh, it's not worth the sacrifice for, for early adopters. Football matters, and it doesn't matter that much to the majority of supporters. I'd say no. And I respect you for actually saying that. Most people won't sacrifice. So what you're going to end up with is the Glazers staying for a period of time. Like, they will sell at some stage when they feel like the club's maxed out. But if you're just, if you not prepared, in my opinion, I understand that protesting is important because you want to get your voice heard. But there's an element of, oh, I've had my voice heard now. I'm going to put my shirt on and go into the ground. And I, I respect that. And this is where I think the guys at the 58 group and that don't like what I say. I'm not saying what you're doing is, is wrong and you're a bad person. When I have a rant, I might say that. But in reality, I don't mean it. But it isn't going to work in the short term, at least, of getting the Glazers out because they just care about making money. Now, my hope is that they start running the club better under Ten Hag and things go in the right direction. But I, I totally get where you're coming from. I really, really do. I really, really do. Uh, question, Terry, why did it work for Liverpool to get Hicks and Gillette out of protesting and really fighting for our club? I remember we almost were in it. Yeah, but that's the point. You were almost in administration. You nearly went out of business. They had to sell. If Man United were about to go into administration, the club would sell. 
you're, you're missing on the, 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 the Glazers make take tens of millions a year out of the football club in dividends. Every time they do a, do a mass stocks, they've made 500 million pounds out of the club through selling stocks. And the asset they bought for zero pounds of their own money is worth six billion. They're not selling. It's, the, 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 there is no like correlation between Hicks and Gillette and the Glazers in terms of the scenario we're in. That's why just protesting won't work. Your protest didn't make the Hicks and Gillette sell the club per se. Them going bankrupt did. If they were making money out of Liverpool, the value of the club was growing, the income was growing, and it was going in the right direction in terms of the profitability, they wouldn't have sold because of the protests. They'd have gone, what? If you guys kept going, but oh, you're protesting, but you're turning up. Money, money, money. In a rich man's world. That's all they care about, my friends. I remember reading in film class about how uh, porn was, uh, was the early uh, adopters of VHS before any of those uh, home movies and rentals. Maybe that's the case. I didn't know that. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. There we go. Uh, the difference in the banking example you gave is that the bank was offering um, other products. Man United aren't offering us the glazes to piss off. Well, but that isn't the point, is it? It's that the, the difference here is that this is the way to make them sell, in my opinion. And the offering at the end of it is new owners because we have got people that are willing to take over. So the way this would work and again, I haven't gone through this in, in, in its entirety because this needs a debate. This needs people sitting down and talking because I'm just kind of, I've, I've got the base of the idea, but you need to talk it through with other people because I don't know how to make this work all by myself alone. I'm not that smart. Let's just say you, you put this idea together with the right people and then you sit down with Jim Ratcliffe and Jim Ratcliffe said, but I back to buy it. Then what you do is you push the movement with do all of this, pull the money, when we crash the price, we've got a, a billionaire here ready to buy it and we'll come back in. This is what you could probably, this is what you might be able to do. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just, this is like spitball here, right? Let me just say this now. Everyone who quits and gives up their season ticket, Jim Radcliffe commits to giving them back their season ticket when he buys it and takes over. The, 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 there is a way to do this, which isn't just so basic and, and, and bland. There's a way to do this. Like, you give it up and we will find a way of getting you your ticket back. But the, the caveat is Man United fans that, that, that don't have tickets, you don't buy them. Like, we have to be together on this. And it is very, very hard. But I'm just spitballing ideas here. But I understand there's a difference in the example. And I do, really do respect your opinion here. And I, I like having the conversation. I want to make this respectful. There isn't a product at the end of it, but there's a solution to the problem that we've got. And the adoption curve isn't solely used for products. It, 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 mentally, it doesn't work that way. It can work for products. It can work for solutions. It can work for change, you know? It really, really can. I've seen it operate that way. But I do respect respect your opinion, my friend. Thank you. Uh, in the current financial global market, inflation will, will hurt the Glazers' pockets as consumer spending decreases, interest rates, hikes, impossible to service the debt. Um, the Glazers need to sell. P.S. I am also dyslexic. Well, you write very well for being dyslexic, my friend. And I hope I hope everything that you're saying is um, is, is true. Um, I, I, you know, like, I, I hope that what you're saying is true. I hope what you're saying is true. Um, I really, really do. Um, but there we go. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was reading something on there. Uh, listen, people, I really enjoyed the show this morning. We're back for the draw for the Europa League later and a massive top six show later on in the day. Um, do me a big, big favor. And uh, Manish, listen, I actually get you guys that it's very hard to get people to do it. But I believe it's, but you're not listening to my point. I believe it's the only way to get the Glazers out. I really do. Along with the protests and everything else. Protests alone don't work if the valuation of the club continues to rise. Why would they sell? What's their reasoning? Like the point is protest, hashtags. If there's no negative outcome for the Glazers, why would, they, ask me this one, why would they sell? That's what needs to be discussed. Anyway, but we, we've digressed onto other subjects today. Listen, I really appreciate you all tuning in. Um, Please smash that like and that share button. Subscribe to the Football Terrace. We're back later today with more content for you. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. See you soon.